Good morning or afternoon, everyone, depending on where you're located. Uh, this morning we'll be talking about the Nexus 1450 historical logs and power quality logs. So anyone who did not see uh, yesterday's presentation, this is what the Nexus 1450 looks like. This is a new version of our Nexus 1250 and 1252 meters. Uh, anyone familiar with our Electro Industries products may already be familiar with the log viewer software that comes with our Communicator EXT program and now Communicator PQA program. Uh, the log viewer is how you would view logs from our Shark 200 series meters, our other Nexus meters. The 1450 meter is unique where we now have a web browser on the 1450 where you can view the logs. So I will go into that right now. So up here we have the web page of the Nexus meter. If you enable security on the meter itself, where you would need to log in to Communicator EXT. You also have to log in to the web browser. All right, there we go. Uh, you may recognize this from the other presentation as well. We have the real-time readings on the meter when you first connect to it. Uh, you have seen ESOM go over uh, these screens already. So if you have any other questions, you can ask them, but I will skip over these for now and go right to the uh, logging information. So starting at uh, PQ data and down to system event and EN5160 reports, this is all the historical information that we can view from the Nexus 1450. Uh, I will start with historical data. Uh, those of you that are familiar with the Nexus 1500 plus meter, we have historical logs one through eight, just like the Nexus meter. On the 1450, we've added a new log called the core log. What this does is it takes 142 of our most commonly asked for points and starts logging it right once the meter is powered up. This way, if the meter is installed and a couple months down the road, you want to see if there is um, specific information inside the meter, typically that information would be found in this log. To find out what those parameters are, over here, we can select this log. And now these are all of the points that are being recorded in our historical core log. Uh, so we've got our line to neutral voltages, the Nexus uh, 1450, 1500 plus meter. They have a fourth voltage input, auxiliary voltage for uh, monitoring a generator, the primary side of a transformer, anything other than your A, B, and C phase voltages, you can bring in to the auxiliary voltage section. So if we wanted to see our line to neutral voltages, our watts, vars, and VA, look at the last two weeks of information. We can query this log. The web browser will connect to the meter, go into the historical logs, and bring those six points into a table that we can view from the web page. All right, while this is loading, just to, uh, for the sake of everybody's time, we do have the log viewer software for the Nexus 1450 as well. So if you don't have the web browser enabled, uh, if you're running into uh, 
slow internet connections like I am today. Uh, we still have Log Viewer where you can retrieve the logs from the meter and uh, view historical information that's saved onto your computer. Uh, so the web browser is nice, but we still have uh, local storage just in case you need it. Uh, we still have the time range. So using the time range button, you can choose whether to view uh, a custom time. So we could look at the month of March, April, uh, May 1st to the 7th. We could also look at the previous hour or multiple hours, days, weeks, months, or years. Uh, the more, the farther you go back in history, the more points will be loaded. So the more time it'll take to load. So if you're only concerned with what happened over the last month or two months, if we choose two months, hit OK. When we load any of these values here on the right, this will uh, only load two months worth of information. The data points button. This allows you to choose uh, which parameters you wanted to view in historical logs. Same with the core log where I chose the six channels. Here you can choose your currents, voltages, watts, anything the meter is reading. Uh, this shows up, this shows a lot more parameters. This is because when you look at the data points in Log Viewer, this gives you all of the points from all of your logs, not just the core log, but your historical logs uh, as well. So core log and historical logs one through eight all show up in here. So if we wanted to take a look at our VAs, our VARs and our Watts, as well as our voltages, hit okay. Click on historical trends. And this meter has information up through January. So if it says no data is found, that might mean that you have not retrieved the log from this meter. Uh, this meter is a meter that was offline that I've retrieved from. So it's not one that's currently being retrieved. Uh, so that's why they were showing no data. Uh, if you ever see that error, it typically means you have not gone far enough back in time. So we just had to extend the uh, time range a couple more months. And now it's bringing in these points. All right, so here you'll notice a couple blank spaces for the voltages while we have readings in every row for the high speed volt amps, VARs, and watts. So one of the other features of being able to record parameters in historical logs one through eight is you can put specific items in a log and have them be recorded at intervals of one minute, five minutes, uh, 15 minutes every hour. So that's, that's what this case is, is showing. We're recording power readings every minute while we're only recording voltages every 15 minutes. So that's why you're seeing these values here but you're only seeing this one line at the 12 o'clock mark. If we scroll down, you'll see at 11.45, we have another set of readings. 
and we still have the power readings at 1145 because we're recording every minute. So uh, that's why you may notice this on some of your logs when you look at them where you have full sets of readings over here, but only sporadic readings on, on another set. That just might mean that they're in different logs being recorded at different intervals. You can also graph this information instead of looking at the table and going through to find some specific numbers. If I choose to graph, I can choose which points to graph. Uh, let's say I just wanted to see what my watts and my vars were. So only the points you bring over here will be graphed. Click on advanced graph. And now we have a full screen view looking at the year of 2020. Since I only have information back through January, February, that's why it's all cut off over here. If I take a look at a month, we're looking at January. We can zoom in by the week. So this area is actually a manufacturing facility. If this was an office building, you might see uh, peak times from eight in the morning till five or six at night, and then it drops off. Uh, because this is a building that is producing 24 seven, you will see some swings based on what type of operations are happening, uh, but you're not going to see that clean line like you would in an office building. Uh, but here you can just take a look and try and find what peak points. So we had Friday, we had a peak. Uh, Tuesday, January 7th, we had a really high peak here. If you click on this line, this will actually show you how high the value went in watts. <laughs> So we had about a peak of 18 megawatts right here. <clears throat> uh, you can also, if you wanted to zoom in on a specific area, if you bring your mouse to the top, click and hold and drag whatever box is selected, we'll zoom into the full screen. So now you can now you can look more in depth at what's going on. You can keep clicking and dragging to zoom in even further. So now we're looking at a time range between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. on January 3rd. Once you want to go back to full screen mode, just click undo zoom and it takes you back to view your week. You can also use the navigate buttons. If you're looking at a week, this will navigate forward and backward by a week. So now we're into December. Uh, looks like this plant was for the most part pretty well shut down over the holiday times. And if we keep going back towards the beginning and middle of December, they were running again. So this is a way to check your, your downtimes when a uh, facility shuts down for holidays, when the facility shuts down for a shutdown, you can see how long the building was shut down to calculate any any losses in revenue from production or just to see what your building was using uh, during these shutdowns. We do have one single vertical scale. Uh, so if I were to try and graph watts and power factor, in the same graph here, uh, we would be seeing watts like this and our power factor line would be down at near zero. So what we do is we give you the option to export this information. 
You can export the picture to send to somebody. You can also export the data used to draw these points and paste it into an Excel spreadsheet where you can create your own graph using Excel. Uh, choosing export to the clipboard, we'll send it to the clipboard and you can just do control V for, or right click and paste into Excel. We can also export this directly to a file that you can send to somebody or open later to edit in a spreadsheet editor. We also have a direct print option. Uh, this, this seems to be only doing black and white right now. Uh, so if you do want to print this picture in a colored format, if you use the export button, export it to an image file and print that image file, then you can get a color image printed. Once you're done here, you can exit, cancel here, and this takes you back into your grid view. If you don't want to use our graphing function in Log Viewer at all, you can actually right click or left click on timestamp, which will highlight all of the cells. You can right click and copy to the clipboard with header and now you can paste all of these values into an Excel spreadsheet so you can create your own uh, graphing uh, chart, however you want it to look. Uh, you can use the multiple access axis or uh, color in the graph, however, however you need to do it for your reporting. We also have a system events log in the meter. So the system events log takes care of any administrative changes made to this meter. So administrative changes would be uh, changing the programming of the meter, setting the time in the meter. A log retrieval would be considered an administrative access. Uh, if you do have passwords in the meter, anytime someone logs into the meter, that would be recorded. If someone tries to log into a meter without knowing the password, it would record that somebody tried to log in and the login attempt had failed. So this log basically keeps track of any time a change was made to the meter. Uh, these meters are meant to be installed in permanent locations, but because they can be installed to monitor a uh, section remotely, uh, temporarily, and move to a new location. You can actually clear the meter out completely, uh, profile, demand, energy readings, and the log files to start fresh at a new location. The system events log does not clear. Uh, there is no setting to clear the system events. And this is to help prevent tampering so someone can't get into the meter, make some changes, and clear the system events to cover their tracks. Uh, that is not possible. The only way to override an event in system events is to have enough events happen after that event to overwrite before the log gets retrieved. Uh, by default, the way this is set up is you need to have over 2,000 events happen before the oldest point is overwritten. Uh, so here we can see a bunch of log downloads. It tells us who retrieved the logs. What happened here, this was a power situation. So the meter lost power, started back up. The meter lost power again, started back up. And we have some more log downloads.
We also have power quality capabilities. So the Nexus 1450 meter can record uh, waveform captures up to 1024 samples per cycle, uh, depending on what V-switch you're using. So any waveforms that get recorded will show up here. So my log may have more waveforms being recorded than this, but I only went back six months. Uh, so what we have here is a trip on January 6th. So the A to B phase voltage sagged. The duration of 3000 milliseconds, this is not the duration of the event, this is the duration of the waveform capture. So uh, don't, don't take this to mean that the event happened for three seconds. If you want to see how long the event happened, if we see January 6th at 939.47 seconds, if I come back and go into the power quality screen, January 6th at 939, these events happened for 354 milliseconds. And then there was actually another event that happened shortly after that lasted for eight seconds. Uh, basically, this was a power loss to this facility. So they had a short power interruption, power came back, and then they had a loss. And that's why you're seeing events happen at on the 6th nearly at the same time. Over here you can see that there's a checkbox where it says waveforms. That means that this event had a waveform capture and that's what correlates back to this waveform line right here. To view the actual waveform we can double click And this takes a little bit. Uh, these meters, again, they can record up to 1,024 samples per cycle. So what this is doing is it's drawing those graphs of the waveform captures on your voltages and currents. And that's what might take a little bit to, to draw that for you. Uh, so you'll see probably can't read it too well if you have a smaller screen, but this says VAB, VBC, VCA. Uh, we have some lines here and we have some notes. So if you wanted to go to VAB full screen, we just double click this window. So here we had set a range and the duration was 341 milliseconds. So this is back in power quality where we saw about 350 milliseconds. This is a way that you can check to see what the duration of an event was uh, without going into that power quality screen. To set a range, you simply right click, annotations. You can set up to four ranges for each waveform. And we can see this power interruption, power came back, and then we had power start to slowly fade until it dropped to zero. And that took about 209 milliseconds. We can also add a note to a log. One was already added here. So the nice feature about adding notes to logs is if you had an event happen, you can log in, you can view the waveform, you can right click and make a note so that when you have to come back and look at this meter a week, a month, or six months down the road, you don't have to try and remember what happened. You have a note and this actually gets saved on the waveform. Uh, so when you exit and close this out, once you open this waveform again, this note comes right back.
We can look at waveform details. So this will show you cycle by cycle. what your harmonics looked like. So during the event, you can see that harmonics started to pick up. So we have our RMS voltages, our peak voltage, uh, crest or K factor value, and total harmonic distortion. We can also view interharmonics. And so this is the harmonics between your uh, first, second, third order. Uh, you have to choose which frequency range you're looking at. And that's an options set frequency. So this was on a 60 hertz application. So now you'll see uh, less than a 10% interharmonic interruptions. Just like the log viewer graphing feature, you can export these pictures to send to someone. You can also export the data that's used to draw these pictures, either in this advanced uh, waveform detail, in the entire ABC phase voltages and currents. We can export all that information, send it into Excel again. Uh, create your own waveform graphing. Same thing, we have print and export. If you do want a printed picture of this waveform, we recommend you export the picture and print it from a picture viewer. You'll also notice here that some of these waveforms have a checkbox where it says contiguous. This contiguous checkbox means that this V to B phase sag happened after the A to B phase voltage sag, but during this three seconds. So even though we captured this B to C phase voltage sag in here, uh, because it happened at a different time, the meter captured a new waveform. So if we try and double click and view this waveform, uh, you'll see that everything was off already. So there's actually no trigger point that shows where the event happened on this waveform. That's what that checkbox for contiguous means. In this case, we're going to be showing uh, zero volts and zero current because of the outage. Uh, but in other cases, if you just have a power interruption, when you open this, you might see just a perfect sine wave and no distortion. So if you do notice that, it's not necessarily an issue uh, with the meter. More likely what it means is that an event happened previously during the previous waveform capture, but after the initial trigger to cause a new waveform capture. Uh, back in the power quality graph, we have the duration, we have the condition of these voltage events. You can also graph this. Uh, it used to be called a Sabima curve. It is currently called just a power quality graph. Uh, basically, this curve was made to represent uh, power quality events that happen, any power quality events that happen within this area are events that are supposed to be considered OK for equipment on an electrical system. This is not a hard and fast rule. Uh, this is more of a guideline for general pieces of equipment. They are typically supposed to be designed to handle power quality events here. So you will see there are some events down here. So these events would be considered events that could potentially 
uh, cause equipment to malfunction or or lose calibration. And so these are the events that we'd actually be concerned about that we'd want to look at. If we go back, uh, in addition to the waveform capture and power quality voltage surge and sags, we also have an out of limit section. So if you wanted to monitor when power factor went outside of a certain value, uh, if your demand went above a certain value, if you wanted to monitor frequency going above or below acceptable ranges, you can set all that up in the meter profile. And this will show you, uh, in this case, we had frequency drop to zero, lasted for six seconds. This was again during that outage. Uh, when everything came back up and running, we had a spike in frequency and that lasted for 0 0.05 seconds. So these, the limits, the waveform and the power quality section are good to look at. So instead of having to record values every minute, every 15 minutes and go through those points to see if there's any issues, you can actually use the limits to just keep track of when there are issues, how long they last. So the meter is now taking care of, of checking your power quality. If you have other software that does power quality reporting, our meters can give you PQDIF and ComTrade file formats to import into third-party power quality systems. The Nexus 1450 meter also records flicker. Uh, flicker is voltage fluctuations on a system. So we do a short-term and a long-term test. The default is 10 minutes for the short term and two hours for the long term testing. And you can see it's still drawing the points. Uh, but what this graph will show you is how much deviation the voltage saw during those tests. So ideally, you would want all these values to be zero. That means that you have a solid. Uh, 120, 115, 110, 277, 480 volt feed. Uh, so the lower these numbers are, the better. Uh, flicker is more prevalent over in Europe. There are some places in the US that are looking at it. Uh, the most visible effect you'll get from flicker is you might notice your fluorescent lights brightening and dimming. And those can be caused by flicker. Uh, you could have flicker without visibly seeing fluorescent lights brighten and dim, and over time that can affect eyes. That will increase eye strain, and it can affect eyesight in the long term. So metering for flicker can help to determine if there could be a problem where you need to uh, apply filtering to your lighting system. So here we had pretty decent feeds. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of variation in our voltages during the short-term 10-minute tests or the long-term two-hour tests. And then we have the EN5160 report. So what I was talking about earlier with the third-party power quality analysis software, our Nexus 1450 internally will give you a power quality report to tell you weekly if you have any events that uh, pass, fail, or are of a concern. 
So on a weekly basis, you can just log in, check these logs. If everything is passed, you're good to go. Uh, if you, in this case, we do have a concern. If you want more details, you can click this line, hit graph. This will generate the report. And once the report's been generated, a PDF copy of the report will show up. You can save it, you can send it, uh, you can just read through it and see if it is something that you need to be worried about. So our concern point was on rapid voltage changes. Uh, here we have meter information. And then we go into the details. So our power frequency was steady, that passed. Our supply voltage variations, uh, you can see throughout the week, there were changes in the voltage, but they were all within acceptable limits. So here's our rapid voltage changes where we had the concern. So if I zoom in on this page a little bit, you get a little documentation as to what we're looking at for rapid voltage changes and what the acceptable values of these changes are. And then down towards the bottom of the screen, most of our changes happened within the plus or minus 5% but you can see there is a short where we had a sag between 5% uh, and 10%. And so that was on the B phase where we had this event. And that's why we had the concern. So it might be something you need to be concerned about. It could have just been a fluke event and it might not happen again. That's why we call that a concern. So here's the flicker. During October, it looks like we did have some issues with flicker. They were okay because it did not last very long, uh, but you can see that there were some higher points of flicker during the month of October. Short-term test. Everything was fine, uh, nothing, nothing out of the normal there. Uh, supply voltage dips, if there were any issues, it looks like there were a couple of dips, but nothing that was outside of acceptable values. Here we had a 70 to 80% dip on C phase and 70 to 60% dip on A and B phases. Any voltage swells will get recorded. Uh, short interruption supply voltages, that was all okay. Uh, power frequency issues, supply voltage unbalance. Everything was pretty well balanced here. Uh, we did not have any issues with harmonics. So those were, those were all within acceptable limits as well. And so everything we're viewing in Log Viewer here, we again have access through the Nexus 1450's web page. So if you don't want to use Log Viewer, you can give individuals access to the historical information from the web page. I was saying too, if you have passwords enabled, uh, you can give users password access to the real-time values without letting them access the 
power quality or historical information from the web page. Depending on what rights you have when you log in, those are the pages that will be available to you. Uh, looks like we're pretty well wrapped up on time. I'm going to, uh, this was, so this was the, the logs, the power quality viewing. Uh, web page views, log viewer, you can use either one of these applications to view historical information from the meter.